Welcome to the Can and Can List video. We're going to go over how to troubleshoot old systems on a Mercedes Benz vehicle. And uh, here we're going to use the Ucanic full system scanner. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a health check where we go through, uh, scan all the systems and read the codes and see what codes are present. Uh, we are going to also enter some of the control units. We're going to look at the transmission control unit, for example, air suspension control unit, and a couple more. To see what you can do um you know to look at like reading the codes look at some live data do some actuations and things of that nature so first uh let's get started with the diagnostics process so when you turn on the scanner you're going to connect it to the obd2 port and then you this is the home screen you can press diagnostics and then here we have all the makes and models we're going to go uh, down to mercedes and select it and then you need to select the model. There's a couple ways to do that. You can do manual selection, but that requires that you know which chassis your vehicle has. So if you're not sure, just go back and just select Smart VIN. Smart VIN is going to read your VIN number. And then a couple of things. While you're doing the diagnostics, uh, once the scanner connects, you'll see the voltage right up here at the top is 12 volt. You should be above 12 volt. The other option is to start the engine in idle. Be careful, you don't want to have a running engine if you are in an enclosed garage. If you're troubleshooting a car inside, make sure that you open that garage door so you get fresh air. But uh, if you uh, see that voltage too low and you can't start the car, so you're doing the troubleshooting, trying to figure out what's wrong, uh, what you should do is connect a charger or 10 volts and below, depends on the control module. A lot of them will start to shut down and you will not be able to communicate with them. Uh, so once you come to this screen, you have two options. You can do a quick scan and uh, or look at each individual control module. So we're going to do with control modules. First, take a quick peek at this. And you can see things are in categories here. You can go to drive and then you have a few control modules in there. You can go to uh, chassis. Then you have a few more control modules in there, including suspension is in there. You go to body. You have a lot of control modules here. Uh, air, airbag, uh, central gateway, ignition switch, key, let's go. And a lot of control modules are under body on Mercedes. Information and communication has a few more instrument cluster, cluster and command and a few other. Uh, so you can see, so things are grouped uh, based on what main purpose they serve. So let's go back though. I'm going to go back again and we're going to do a quick scan. A quick scan, what it is going to do is going to uh, go through all the control modules that are in the car. This vehicle has 40 over. Uh, over 40 control modules and that's very common with Mercedes. Uh, one thing that happens here as well is that the scanner is going to um, to look at what control modules are applicable to this vehicle. So let's say for example you have a Mercedes that uh, does not have aromatic suspension. This scanner is going to look and try to communicate that with the uh, airbag suspension. Uh, control module if that is applicable to the chassis so if it's for example an e-class some of them uh, might have uh, aromatics and but the base models do not so the scanner is going to try to communicate with the aromatic suspension control unit and if that does not respond then um, it will skip that so you, you won't be able to now it's either because that module is not installed in the car or there is an issue with that control module if you know for sure that's present so if you know you have aromatic suspension but when you try to scan it there's no it says no communication or when you manually go select it and and you get no communication error that means that control module is not powering up it's not getting power uh, it could have a short inside or something of that nature and that's why uh, that that's not uh, communicating. So here you can see that the scan is complete and then we can scroll down. We see the uh, control modules and then we see how many codes there have. If you select this drop down arrow right here, then you'll see the codes for that uh, control unit that you're looking at. Now we can click on it and enter that and look at more live data and do some bidirectional testing. But here we can uh, take a look at the overall picture so as you can see on the left here, you have the fault code. Here you have status of the code. This is very important. Current codes, that means that's a current issue. So that needs to be addressed and fixed before you can clear it. But you have codes down here like stored fault codes. Those can be cleared. So anything that's stored can be cleared. But if it's got stored and current, then you won't be able to clear that without fixing the issue. So we can see the transmission, for example, has a number of uh, store codes and you can see the code and status and the description over here 
and you can clear those. Airbag has no codes. Uh, instrument cluster has a bunch more, and so on. So if you keep on going, then uh, you'll see some control modules here have no full code. They passed, and uh, but there is one that did not communicate. You can see radar sensor control unit did not communicate. You know, so if that like control module is not getting power, it's unplugged. It's got a short inside. It's, you can get an error code like that. Now, what you can do here, you can hit erase and clear. And then what the scanner will do is it's going to go through each one of these control modules and then send the uh, erase command. And what's going to happen is all the codes that are stored will clear, but the ones that are current, the, those, those are not going to clear. So, but you can also look at, click on report. And this is, if you scroll down to the bottom of report, here you, you can see everything condensed. Uh, so basically... Just the codes, their status, and um, if you're getting help uh, from us, this will be a good way to take a couple of pictures here and send them to us so that we can help you further and see what's going on. So let's go back though. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back and then we can enter any of those control modules to do further troubleshooting. So let's say, for example, we want to look at the front SAM, driver SAM. It's got 12 codes. So we're going to look at uh, those, we're going to look at some live data and some, do some actuations on that control module. So here you can see the codes, if you read codes, now we're inside the front SAM communicating to that control module. Uh, if you read codes, we're going to see the same codes we saw previously. So this is not going to be any different, but what we could do is if we want to just clear the codes on, only on this control module, we can enter each one of them individually and clear codes from that control module. So you can see here there's a bunch of full codes because the voltage dropped under 10 and uh, then you can see the that control module throwing a bunch of codes. L live data, we can look at voltages, you can look at uh, exterior lightning status, but we can also control those, turn those on and off with the scanner. So you can look for air conditioning, you can look at you know status and ambient temperature sensor and things like that. When you have a value that's so low, it's like um, minus 40. This, for example, right there, that temperature sensor is unplugged. So it just defaults to a very low value like uh, you see there. But um, there's a lot, but we can control a lot of them. So if you go back and you go to active tests, those things that we were looking at live data for, we can we could actually control. You can control the horn, turn the horn on, AC compressor. Um, which, by the way, there is an AC control unit as well, so you can do more directional tests for that under the uh, AC control unit. Uh, here, for example, let's go to windshield wiper. You can turn on the wiper, um, the wipers, or the washer pump. The, um, the in the windshield washer reservoir, you can turn that pump on if that's not working. So you can do tests here. Let's, for example, select on the wipers. Press OK. You can press A, and then the wipers kick on. And then four will make him go faster. And 12, we turn it off. All right, so let's go back. As, as, so you can see here all these different uh, different tests that you can run. Steering column adjustment. So you, you're you not sure if the switch in the steering column is working. Well, you can control it from here, up and down. You can see here, forward, back, up, down. And then determine if it, the problem is the switch or if the problem is going to be the motor. So if the motors, if you can't control it with the scanner um, then then you probably have an issue with that motor or that wiring to it or or maybe a fuse uh, because you are basically bypassing the, the the switches on the car you're going straight to that control module that's uh, connected or controlling those systems so uh, for example this is a hybrid we can go to uh, a battery management system this is the main uh, control unit that controls uh, the hybrid system here we can see everything on the hybrid battery you can see like uh, things like you can read the codes of course this does not have any uh, active test there's not a whole lot you can test that but under general actual values look at this you can see charge level the hybrid battery is 10 percent this is the value and this is the range where it should be um, and you can see things down here sets of contactors these got to be closed for the cart in order to start interlock has a fault all these things in isolation resistance needs to be over 1000 is 5000 uh, the hybrid batteries for example uh, keep track of how many times that contactors have been used it starts at 7 uh, it actually starts at 200,000 on this vehicle and goes down to to zero right now it's at 75,000 
but once it hits a zero that battery needs to be replaced so there's a lot of things that you can do um, uh, let's go back so that's that was the uh, BMS or the battery management system for the hybrid and um, let's go back up here let's say so you can enter any of these control modules here but if you go further back we're going to exit this you can manually select them so uh, they're going to be in these subcategories we looked at earlier go to transmission for example and then you can look live data for example if you want to know what uh, the temperature is for um, the transmission fluid you can go to for example you go to shift programs and you'll see uh, down here it should be transmission oil temperature so as you drive the car that's going to increase and then you can check for example the transmission fluid level because the, the fluid needs to be a certain temperature so you can see all of that one other thing important here for example we have you can check drive authorization this it's also under the EIS or the ignition module if you go to drive authorization you should see if the transmission is giving the okay to start the engine so if you troubleshoot a mercedes that won't start it's a good thing to look at um, let's go look at the ignition switch as well because you're going to have that um, you should have data in there for drive authorization as well so now here i have to just go through these different modules and find where that ignition switch control module is there we found it go to live data for that and then you see here we have drive authorization this actually looking at a few different things so it's going to look at EZS and it's going to look at transmission engine control module see it's ME start enable that's the uh, electric motor in this vehicle since uh, this car does not have a typical starter has an electric motor that starts the engine because we're this is a hybrid Mercedes so but you can look at a lot of things you can look at door contacts you do have to look around and find what system you're trying to troubleshoot and you know what data is sent is being sent to that but uh, that's um, that's how you can troubleshoot a Mercedes you can look at um, the last one we're gonna look at is gonna be the motor electronics and this is your engine control unit there's two ways that you can look at your engine uh, one is by coming here and selecting motor electronics And then here we can read the codes and now we're looking to engine control unit so like if your engine check engine light is on or your engine is you know having issues hesitating in lip mode and things of that nature you're going to come in here and you can see whatever codes are present but uh go to live data and then you can look at all this information right here uh if further data you can look at oxygen level sensor like uh, just basically fuel pump system uh, fuel pump pressure and so many things uh, there's another way to look at this though so uh, let's go back let's go back I'm gonna go back all the way to the home screen almost if you go to diagnostics and scroll back to the top you go OBD2 we're not we didn't select Mercedes there but we're just gonna select OBD2 and then here we select our um, uh, Mercedes and let's go press OK we're gonna change select engine control module and then uh, we're gonna go to I am readiness because this is gonna show us what those systems are we're gonna select DTC cleared okay so uh, the, the engine control module to uh, for the purpose of emissions it monitors a few different things the monitors uh, means fire fuel system catalytic converters heated catalytic um, uh, converter uh, and oxygen sensors and a few things and these are just mainly for emission and if for example if you clear the check engine light or if you have the battery disconnected uh, it takes a while it takes a few days of driving a certain driving um, patterns but most drivers don't have to worry about it if you just drive your Mercedes as you normally would for about within a week you usually all these systems get tested by the vehicle and make sure that they don't have any faults um, and then so that's why right here the battery was disconnected so we have a few that are incomplete incomplete and then if there is an issue it's not going to say okay it's going to find problem found or it's not going to pass so this is important because if you have a car and you want to know if you will pass emission you can come in here and look at this without even having to go to the emission test you need to have all of these as okay you should not have any incomplete not applicable you don't need to worry about the car does not have that system it does not apply to your vehicle so uh, keep that in mind here is what's important is live data 
there's a lot of data that gets sent to the engine control unit so if you click um, like data here it's gonna you can do all data we're gonna click on that and we're gonna scroll through this really quick but it just shows basically so much information which you could just select it just only a couple of those and then graph them uh, if you wanted to graph them but you can see here oxygen sensor information uh, time since engine start uh, fuel uh, level input uh, pressure outside pressure and you can see so much this list is very long uh, if anything is out of range it's going to be in uh, in red here and again on this case the ambient temperature is unplugged so it's showing us a negative minus 40 value so there's a lot of information and like I said you can graph those you come down here you select it so uh, let's go back and there's one last thing we need to look at and that is um, uh, looking at some reset functions if we go back here if we go to maintenance you have a few setting uh, reset functions in here for example you can do things like um, coat some fuel injectors or if you have electronic parking brake and you're trying to replace the rear brake pads we need to put the rear uh, brakes or the electronic parking brake in service mode so that uh, the vehicle will release uh, the parking brakes otherwise you can push out uh, the, the pistons in the caliber to fit the new the new brake pad so you could come in here for example and then press that and then control module electronic parking brake and then what uh, we're gonna activate that in a second so installation position of braking uh, uh, brake cables uh, press OK there and then with three we release the parking brakes but this is not simply just releasing the parking brakes it's actually putting them in service mode you can come back here and then you can uh, operate parking brake and once you're done with replacing it you press 4 and uh, the brakes should go into um, back to normal operating state so uh, there's a few other uh, reset function you can reset the uh, steering angle sensor and things like that not everything in this list is going to apply to your vehicle uh, like for example programming keys uh, let's say it's this is not going to work on a mercedes um, uh, or dpf that's for diesel vehicles that's not going to apply battery registration um, doesn't apply to most mercedes and things of that nature so not everything on this list is going to apply but uh, there's a lot of settings and resets that you could do and do apply to your vehicle and then let's go back let's see